Hi everyone, so if you're tuning in for the first time then my name is Marianne Hansen. I'm the owner and counsellor at New Journeys Counselling where I provide counselling to couples, to individuals and also um, I specialise in relationships but I also work with individuals with depression, stress, anxiety um, and other issues, anger, self-worth. So in this video what I'm going to be talking about is how to handle conflict situations or hostile um, circumstances when they arise. Now, the reason I'm making this video today is because I was in the situation today and it was really funny because, well not funny, but it was really interesting because um, I had three appointments today, three counselling appointments and in between my appointments when there's a bit of spare time, especially when I've got like an hour or so, I'll go off somewhere, I might have something to eat or I might go and um, make some videos. So I went to a local park where I normally go to shoot my videos um, if I don't do them indoors and I was filming my video and someone came up to me and they were um, looked like they were interested in what I was doing. Now since I've been making videos for YouTube or for wherever I do get people coming up to me sometimes, a lot of times they'll just walk past and they'll look, that's if you're filming outdoors. It's part of what we know is going to happen if you're making videos. Now this person stopped and was listening to what I was saying and he was acting as though he's interested in like what I've got to say. So I carried on talking and just pretended he wasn't there and then after I finished the video he came over, said what his name was, tried to shake my hand which I sort of you know resisted from doing that and then started talking and talking about what I was saying. Now one of the key things I did notice was that he smelt of alcohol. Now he wasn't drunk and he didn't look like someone that's like, you know, was intoxicated, but he, I could just smell the alcohol on, his, on him. So I just was kind of trying to end the conversation and explaining that I'm doing my videos, but I've got a counselling appointment coming up. So I'm gonna, I can't really stop and talk. So after a few minutes of talking, I've moved on. Um, he walked on anyway. About 10 minutes later he came back and said, oh, you're still here. And I was literally walking to my car at this point. So um, I said, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to my car. And then he goes, you're very rude, he said. And I said, what do you mean by that? He said, well, you're supposed to, you said you're a counsellor. He says, and I'm trying to talk to you about um, what you were talking about in your video. And he said, it's all cuds wallop anyway. Um, and I said to him, well, that's your opinion. I says. I, I said. I've you. I've spoke to you. I've given you time earlier on. I explained that I was making a video and I'm in a rush to an appointment and that's where I'm going now. So the key thing in that situation was I could see that this person is obviously they've been drinking, like I said, and they're hostile. There's me in the park and there's this strange person. So the key. This is part of the video really about handling conflict. Now. If you first of all show that you're, if you continue to engage in a discussion, especially with someone who they're not rational if they've been drinking, anyone that takes drugs or drinks, as much as you're trying to have a reasonable conversation with them, they're not rational, so it's like pointless really to engage in that. But then also you don't want to agitate someone, so you don't want to also be aggressive or raise your tone. So politely I just was kind of starting to walk backwards then towards my car. And then this person continued to try and talk to me and was saying, um, you're not very professional, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, so all I said to the person was, well, you know, thanks for your feedback. I says, I didn't really ask for your feedback. I says, you don't know like the work I do and you don't really know me. So I said, you know, I'm going now, I'm off to my car and stuff. And then I was still walking to my car. Luckily, he didn't follow me to my car, but he was still talking and saying stuff, but I was just ignoring it. So... The key thing if you're in a situation really and that could either be whether it's with a stranger or whether it's just um, a conflict situation that could arise whether it's at home at work or wherever I'm going to give you four tips on what I feel is how you should try and handle the situation. So the first thing is to say how you feel. Now the important thing with this though is if you're talking to a stranger or someone who you don't want to use words like, you're really scaring me, for example, because by saying that to someone, you're making yourself vulnerable and then they know you're scared. So <laughs> I wouldn't advise saying that. If it's someone that you know and it's in a home situation or say you were working in a children's home or something, you might use terms like that so that the person can be aware that, you know, 
you, you're scaring me now, so they might not be aware of that, but it's about how you use that term. Other things you could say to someone is, um, I feel that this is going a bit too far now. I feel like this could escalate now. So you're expressing how you feel. That's the first step. Then you're telling the person what you need from them. So a sort of sentence you might use would be, this is going too far now. So that's how you feel. I'm going to ask you to walk away or I'm going to walk away now. So, or I need you to stop shouting at me or I need you to um, give me some space and to move back a bit. Whatever you're asking, I think if you've already told them how you feel. So you're, you're starting by expressing yourself. You're then telling them what you need from them and you're doing it in a polite way. And then the third step to that is to let you let them know what you're going to do. Now, if it's a really hostile situation you're in, you can give um, options. So you can say to someone, um, I'm, re I'm feeling quite scared or I'm feeling quite intimidated by what you're saying. I need you to stop shouting at me. Um, I'm going to walk away if you keep continue to shout at me. Or if you keep more moving forward towards me, this is what's going to happen. So you're giving them options. You're telling them now what you're going to do. And the fourth bit is to follow through. There's no point in being in a conflict situation with a person. This like really occurs a lot as well in like say domestic violence situations or if there's parents who are having like problems with their children. If you if you don't follow through on what you said you're going to do, then all you're saying to that person is we've just had this communication between us, but it didn't mean anything because you know I've just continued to let you shout at me, swear at me, push me, kick me, and I'm not going to like take any action. So the key thing, step number four, you have to follow through. So don't say anything that you're going to do unless you're confident that you're going to follow through on it. It's better that you say something um, with less consequence than to like say something and then not do it. So that's kind of um, a bit longer than I wanted to make this video. But that is sort of explaining how to handle conflict. Now you're going to come across lots of situations where conflict's going to occur. It doesn't always have to be in the home or between strangers. It can be um, in enclosed spaces. It can be, especially be mindful of like time of the day, like whether things, because at night time or if you're traveling on public transport out of town in another city, I think you've just always got to be aware, but you've also got to, one key thing I would say, to you, you're you never in control of how another person is going to respond and react. You're only in control of your words and your behaviour. So don't sort of take chances with people you don't know. So you might say the wrong word or the wrong thing, and then that could actually spark or trigger someone in a different direction. Um, because I work with anger management clients, I've done anger management training, and I've also done my counselling training. I, I'm aware sometimes of certain words that will, like when you say to certain people, calm down, I know for many people just hearing calm down or um, being patronising or whatever your certain language you're going to use, that is going to trigger them even more. So it's just being mindful of that. But at the end of the day, you have the right as a person not to have anyone talk to you in a disrespectful way or to be aggressive towards you. So it's about um, really exer exerting that in an assertive way. So I hope you found this video useful. As I've said in this video, I do do anger management um, training. It's usually um, counselling. It's usually six sessions. A lot of people who come from me are sent through the courts or maybe they've been um, involved in family disputes and then their partner has said you need to go for counselling. So that's something that I do. I'll also leave all my details about the other types of counselling that I provide and you can get in touch with me as usual. So thank you for watching and I hope you found this video informative. If you have, please leave some comments below like, share, subscribe to the channel and I look forward to seeing you again soon watching another one of my videos. Take care, bye.